Welcome back students. In this video, we're going to look at resonance structures and what makes one more significant or important than another. In our past videos, we considered sets of resonance structures. And when we drew a set of resonance structures, we then created a resonance hybrid from that. The resonance hybrid was the melding of the resonance structures that we had drawn. So for example, in this particular set of resonance structures, which I have to complete, what will happen is a lone pair will come around, form a pi bond, and then the electron pair will end up on this exterior carbon. If we wanted to draw the resonance hybrid for this, what we would do is draw all of the single bonds that don't change, and then we would include the pi bonds as dashed. So there was a pi bond here in one structure and a pi bond here in another structure. When we did this last time, we assumed that each of the structures in your resonance structure set were contributing equally to the resonance hybrid. What that would mean is we're saying that 50% of this and 50% of this meld together to make the resonance hybrid. And in this case, it's not actually true. Not all resonance structures are going to contribute equally. Maybe one of the structures better describes where the electron density is in the structure at any point. And what I wanna take notice of is how the oxygen in the first resonance structure is negative and how the extra electron density on the second stru structure is on a carbon. Let's think about electronegativity values. Oxygen is significantly more electronegative than carbon is. Therefore, the structure on the left, the one that I have the star over, is going to be more significant. It's going to contribute more heavily to the resonance hybrid because it's better showing where the electrons are in the structure. Because the electrons are going to hang out next to the electronegative atom more often than they're going to be hanging out on a carbon. The way that we can draw this in the resonance hybrid is when we put in our partial negatives and our partial negative here, Instead of drawing the partial symbol, which is a, a delta, it's like a fancy S. Instead of drawing the S's the same size, what we can do is make this S bigger to say more electron density is around that oxygen than this carbon, which is going to have a smaller delta symbol. And that's how we would illustrate that these two resonance structures do not contribute equally to the hybrid. Now, they're both something called major contributors. Major contributors are structures that we will draw in our resonance structure set because they contribute to the hybrid. But not every resonance structure that we're capable of drawing is going to actually contribute to the hybrid. Some are called insignificant or insignificant contributors they do not really show how the electron density is sitting in the molecule, and so we don't draw them. What I want to do is take a couple of moments and talk on the next slide about what our goals are for drawing resonance structures. What makes one structure more significant than another, and what makes for an insignificant structure? Our first goal is to minimize charge. Now, a lot of resonance structures are going to have a charge. You can't get away from having one or two charges. But what you can do is make sure that when you're drawing your resonance structure set, right, where the set is everything you're putting in brackets, that you're only drawing things that contribute significantly to the resonance hybrid, which will exclude structures that have three or more formal charges. If we look at this first structure, notice how we have an oxygen that's negative. On the second one, we have an oxygen that's negative, a carbon that's positive, and an oxygen that's negative. On the third structure, we have an oxygen that's negative. Two of these structures are significantly better than the other. That middle structure is just insignificant. 
because what you're seeing is you have three atoms that are also all adjacent to one another, right? They're also right next to one another, where you have three charges, and this is insignificant. What that means for us is when we draw the resonance set, I'm actually not even going to include this one. If you included it on your scratch paper or while you were working, that's fine. But at the end, come back and look at those resonance structures you've drawn and say, do these make sense? Are these things that I can actually do? I have three formal charges on this structure. Is that actually a thing? And the answer is no. If we're crossing off that middle structure, then I want to show you how to get from the first structure to the final one. And all it would require is an extra arrow here. You draw that additional arrow and you can get immediately from the first structure to the last structure. Notice how in this sentence I said, in general, structures with three or more charges should be avoided. Of course, it's chemistry, there's always an exception. Let's look at the exception. The exception is with the nitro group. A nitro group has an NO2. And I drew an example of a molecule with an NO2 in it down here on the left. I put in a CH3 so that you can see that even when you have a perfectly fine structure where there is no resonance in the carbon portion, you're going to have already two atoms that have formal charge. And what we said on the previous page was if you have three or more charges, it's insignificant. What that would mean for nitro is if you had any part of your structure that could develop or be shown to have a positive charge in a resonance structure or a negative charge, then all of your nitro resonance structures would be insignificant. And, and that's just not going to happen. So what I did here was I drew nitrobenzene. And for nitrobenzene, I want to draw in some arrows. I'm not going to draw all the resonance structures for this because there's actually quite a few, but I just want to draw at least one. If I pull over this pair of electrons and say, let's form a double bond between the carbon and the nitrogen, then we need to push these electrons here. Otherwise, nitrogen would have too many bonds. And what will happen as a result? is now your nitrogen has a double bond here, a single bond to oxygen, a single bond to oxygen, plenty of lone pairs on those oxygens that are negative. This part didn't change, this part didn't change, and the new part is that we have a positive formal charge. Now we have three atoms, one, two, three, that have formal charges. And this is because nitro is special. Nitro on its own already has two. So when you're asked to minimize formal charge, just know that the rule of once you hit three formal charges, we're calling it insignificant, that doesn't apply for the nitro group. Our next goal is to have octets for atoms. It's not always going to be possible to have octets for atoms. But this helps us decide when we have two structures, which one's more significant than another. Here I have a resonance structure set where I have one structure that's showing a carbon that has a positive charge, and over here, a nitrogen that has a positive charge. Resonance structures where all of the atoms have an octet are going to be more significant than when you have an atom that's lacking an octet. What this means for us is that this first structure is less significant than the second structure, which is more significant. The second structure is more significant because all of the atoms have an octet. At this point, students will usually look at this and say, but the nitrogen's positive. Nitrogens don't want to be positive. Nitrogens are electronegative. You have a positive charge on an electronegative atom. Yeah, it's okay, because there's a priority here, right? The priority is accomplish octets. 
and then if you need if you if you need to have electronegative atoms not be positive so having an octet is more important than having a positive charge on an electronegative atom so this one is more significant because every atom has an octet our next goal is to avoid opposite charged carbons adjacent to one another carbon carbon bonds are nonpolar carbon has an electronegativity value of 2.5 when you have it bound to another carbon also electronegativity value of 2.5 you get zero electronegativity difference that means your carbon-carbon bonds, they're sharing electrons pretty darn well. So then why would we end up drawing a resonance structure that shows one carbon as positive and the next door carbon as negative? That is the opposite of a covalent bond. That's us saying, hey, that carbon-carbon bond, it's actually kind of ionic. And that's not true. Your carbon-carbon bond is sharing electrons really well. Therefore, if you start going through resonance structures and you come up with this final one that's in the set that I've drawn, you're not going to include it because it is insignificant. So this one's not even included in your resonance structure set. If you accidentally draw it in your series of resonance structures, you go back and you erase it. And you would probably go back and also erase the arrow on this structure that generated the one that we just crossed off. So resonance structures where adjacent carbons have opposite charges, they're no good. They're insignificant. And even in some instances when you have carbons throughout the structure where one is positive and one is negative, other people might call those insignificant as well. Plus, usually those end up having three or more total formal charges, which would be another reason to call them insignificant. Let's wrap up. In this video, we looked at relative importance of resonance structures. I want you to be able to look at a set of resonance structures and say, is one of these more significant than another? I also want you to know when you should remove insignificant structures from your resonance set. So if something has three or more charges, it's out, except if there's a nitro group. If something has carbons where one carbon is positive and one carbon is negative, it's out. Keep on practicing drawing resonance structures. It takes a lot of practice. Thanks for your attention. This is Katoni signing out.